I'm going to tell you a story. There was this old man that went to a junkyard. He saw this old 1967 Ford Mustang. He goes to the owner of the junkyard and says, hello, sir, I'm here to buy my 1964 Ford Mustang. The, the, the guy that owned the salvage yard was like, I don't, I, don't, I don't sell these cars. Like, it's a salvage yard. We're going to crush it. We're going to smash it. We're going to sell it for scrap metal, like sell it for parts. He was just like, yeah, yeah, but that's, that's my 1967 Ford Mustang. He was like, it's not yours. Like, what are you talking about? Old man, get out of here. The old man said, look, man, I don't, I don't want to cause any problems. I just, I just really came to get my car back. So the guy was just like, look, that's not your car and it's not for sale. The old man said, okay, can you just name a price? I'll pay whatever price, just name a price. And the guy is like, you know what? You know, $30,000 or get out of my shop or I'm calling the cops. The old man said, okay, sir, I'll see you in the morning. Old man goes home, puts a little microwave of dinner in there, eats a dinner, goes to sleep, wake up the next morning, shaves, go to the bank, pulls out $30,000 cash goes back to the salvage yard. It's like, good morning, sir. I'm here to buy my 1967 Ford Mustang. The dude said, you, what, what's wrong with you? Like, I'm not selling it to you. He said, sir, you told me $30,000 and he dropped the cash on the counter. The guy that owns the salvage yard is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, like, are you serious? He said, yes, sir. He was like, why would you pay so much for something that's worth nothing? He says, sir, I, I need to tell you, it don't have an engine. For all the tires are, are like flat, it's rusty, it's mold on the inside. It's, it's completely like the light's been busted out, like it ain't no good. He was like, I've had it here for about eight years. It's only a few more parts you could even buy and then we gonna crush it and sell it for scrap metal. The dude said, sir, thank you for that, but I've got a tow truck on the way. Can I just please get the keys or whatever you have? So the guy was just like, okay, you, that's weird. So here you go. So he gives him the keys, the tow truck comes and tows it back to the old man's house. The old man goes in his garage and over the next few months, he begins to slowly work on this car. He takes out the old seats. He gets the new interior seats done. He, he bondos the flooring and the side. He gets new carpet. He orders new lights. He orders like the new frame, like everything, like the muffler, the pipe system, the wood grain steering wheel. Like he, he puts in work over months and almost like $80,000 worth of work and effort into this vehicle. And then when it's all done, he puts that candy red paint job on. I'm talking about that candy paint. And that thing is looking good. He orders the brand new Michelin tires with the chrome wheels. This thing is like a work of art. And he takes it to the salvage yard. He pulls up at the salvage yard and everybody, all the workers, you know, they, they car people, they're car enthusiasts. So they come out, they walk around like, ooh wee, that thing is nice, boy. Oh man, it's like, thank you, sir. The owner comes out and says, sir, this is a work of art. He said, thank you. The owner says, where'd you get this from? The old man's like, I, I got it from you. He's like, he's like, I wish, I wish. I'll never let something like this go. Actually, my bad, let me tell the right story. He said, I never let something this valuable go. And he says, well, sir, you did. He was like, remember I came in and bought it. It didn't look like this, but I paid $30,000 for it. The man that owned the salvage yard took off his hat and was like, oh my God. He said, you're that crazy man that came and bought this car. He said, yes, sir. He said, but, but why would you pay such a high price for something that's so worthless? He said, well, it's worthless to you, but it means everything to me. He says, he says okay, okay, it means everything to you. Like, what do you mean? Because I remember you kept saying, like, this is my 1967 Ford Mustang. He said, yeah. He was like, but it wasn't yours. Like, that's the part that kind of had me thinking you was crazy. He said, see, sir, you don't understand. In the 60s, I worked for Ford. I was the designer of the Mustang. 
He was like, years ago, I remember being in my office sketching out the way I wanted the lights to look and the, the interior seats and the front fender. And he was just like, so this car means a lot to me because it came from me. I, cre I actually created this car. And he said, and he said, and he said, and it pains me to see this vehicle in this position when I know that I can do something about it. The old man said, to you it's worthless, but to me it's priceless. To you it's only good for scrap metal, but for me, I see endless potential. And he said, I understand that you thought it was worthless because you ain't created, you didn't know what to do with it. He was like, but if you just put this vehicle in my hands, if you just put it in my hands, watch me work. And the old man then took that vehicle and did the opposite of what a lot of people do. Some of my partners I went to college with y'all, they like customize and, and redo old schools, you know what I'm saying? Like the Cutlass, the Impalas, like they, that's what they put all their money towards, right? And they typically put it in the garage and once or twice a month, they're gonna drive it on a Saturday. This old man did something different. He took this vehicle all across the country on tour to let everybody know that he restores. He could have hit it. He could have put it off a side somewhere. But he's like, no, 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 no. I'm gonna put this in front of the world so everybody can see that your condition is not your conclusion. <laughs>